Hi everyone, I'm Mark. And I'm Alex. And this is Final Stop for Final Fantasy Talks. Welcome everyone to episode 25. We are in our Final Fantasy IX walkthrough playthrough series. Episode 6 is where you want to go if you're new starting out because that is where we begin. And we left off with the party going back to Medainsari to basically get back Ico's gem or whatever it was that was stolen. We picked up Amaranth along the way after he was, you know, all very emotional about not dying. And so now we need to yeah. go back to the Aoife tree again to see if we can find Kuja. So that is where we're at. You go into the tree and you're instantly started off with, you know, some cutscenes. And just a disclaimer here, there's a lot of cutscenes, right? There's a lot of story movies and all that so we're gonna try our best to kind of hit on all of it obviously we can't just go through it line for line because we'll be here all day and so we're gonna kind of just cherry pick some things to talk about but you know i mean we're progressing hardcore here aren't we oh yeah i mean kind of like what you're saying we try to cover as much as we can um but there's always so much that we can't so i think with a lot of the story and stuff like that we kind of have to um you know generally go over what the main points were but anyways, let's continue. So at this point, you know, we, we go into the Aoife tree again. And right at that entrance part, yeah. there's a cut scene where you get to see, uh, well, where they have a little bit of dialogue and they talk about how there's no more mist. They defeated the soul cage or the, um, the creature of the mist. And Amaranth is really impressed that they have that kind of power. Yeah, he's he's got like such an obsession with power for some reason, you know what I mean? It's yeah. always like, oh, Zidane's power. How did, you know, yeah. Zidane beat me? Oh, where does he get this power? Oh, I'm impressed. Like, it's just, yeah. and it's all internal dialogue, of course. And so that, yeah, as you just said, you know, that's what he is. He's like, oh, they got rid of the mist. That's impressive. And luckily, as things do work out in Final Fantasy, what do you know? Who shows up right as we get there? Man, perfect <laughs> timing, right? Just immaculate timing. I know, I mean, because it was like what we were talking about last time, you know. The chances of this happening, you know, we went back to Maiden Sorry, and it's just like, and then Zidane's like, oh, no, it's okay, Kucha can wait. It's like, how do you know that? So, anyways. Um, well, well, yeah, I mean, to drive that yeah. point home, they could have tripped on the way to Aoife Tree the second time and missed him. You know, it's just exactly. like, oh. Amazing how that that lines up, but all yeah. works out. Here he is, Kuja's arri- arriving on his silver dragon. It's always that's kind yeah. of his, the key note here and the factor of knowing that it's Kuja's this silver dragon. Hey, dude, I was just I played this yesterday. You know, as we went through our notes and creating them, it it's hysterical. You know, they they show Kuja goes to him and he's like he's doing his you know speech all you know blah blah blah. <laughs> the dude is literally standing like just a full on standing lock knees on his dragon flying through there. Yeah. Like how the heck is that possible? I know it's so funny and he's just they're flying through the air and everything. And yeah, like what you said, he's just kind of sitting there having his little conversation his old dialogue yeah. about his plan and how well, <laughs> everything is working out just fine and everything you know they always have this like evil plan of course yes but yeah at this point we don't even know like anything about the silver dragon but we'll no. find out more about that and so anyways before we start off here you get another change party option i think we're pretty much in agreement that you should probably have amaran in the party right yeah, yeah, Zidane, Amaranth, probably Vivi, you know, I mean, at this point, we already know that, you know, our first time around here at the Aoife tree, it was a lot of undead enemies, so actually having Ico and Dagger in the party was was great. Yeah. You probably want Amaranth just to, to develop him, and then at that point, well, Ico or Dagger, I mean, that's just kind of up to you. And that's the thing, I mean, because really, Dagger and Ico pretty much fill the same role. It's just yes. a healer. So really, you don't actually need both of them. And having Amaran is an, around is nice because it frees up Zidane to steal. So that yeah. all the attacking, you know, all the physical attacking isn't all on him. Regardless, uh, it's pretty much exactly the same as it was last time. It's just a straightforward path. You just run along the routes. Um, exact same enemies at this point. Yeah. But another, uh, like what we noted last time, and this is still the case, we still don't have Kina. 
to yeah. be able to eat any of these enemies for roulette or level five death or anything like that. But yeah, and it's the classic case with nine here, where you know, even if you're just running through the routes. I mean, for instance, I didn't get into any battles at all. Yeah. And I, uh, and I was just running, you know. I mean, I didn't do anything extra or, you know, try to go as fast as possible. I was just going along. And so chances are you probably won't get in any fights either. But just remember, if you do, you know, you got the stropers. You can kill them instantly with softs. Everything else, yeah. they're undead. So you can kill them instantly with life. And Phoenix Downs work really well. But... Just to kind of go back to Amaranth, Amaranth is nice because, like I said, yep, you can freeze up Zidane. And then also, Zidane on mine, he has Exploda. And that's kind of what I'm trying to work on. I'm trying to master those abilities. Oh, and yeah. he does about 500 ish, 550. Amaranth with this Poison Knuckles does the same. So it's nice to kind of get matching damage that's physical. You know, I have to sit there and cast and use up MP all the time. Yeah, exactly. That's a funny point. So he went straight to the Poison Knuckles because his Cat Claws. Like I said, isn't the ability like spare change and it takes forever? <laughs> yeah. I just can't be bothered. Like that that ability, yeah. And, and well, and, and as we said too, you can get it from other items. And right. you yeah, know, you poison knuckles is pretty on. good. Not that I particularly love using counter all the time because it just takes up so much of the um, crystals or you know whatever it is for equipment mm -hmm. abilities. But two hundred and forty AP is counter for Amrit. That's insane. Yeah. That's like high Actually, tide Kina level, you know. That, that's a good point. I mean, because we we've never really mentioned that, but all of these um, passive abilities, I guess you could call them things like the killer abilities, the um, yeah. immunity abilities to certain status effects and things like that, they tend to cause different AP amounts for different characters. And Kina and Amaranth are special in that counter for Amaranth. Like Mark was saying, costs 240 AP, yeah, and the insane. reason why that is is because every single one of his weapons, I believe, has counter on it. So really, don't worry about that. He'll learn it eventually. But it yeah. was the same thing with Kino, where High Tide costs uh, 250 AP or yeah. something like that. It's so just a ton. It's just kind of weird the way the game does it, but it makes it easier by having it on every weapon that they have, so yeah. they eventually learn it. And so moving forward here, you obviously, like I said, just keep going through the routes. At some point, Zidane stops and is like, oh, we're going to pass the trunk, you know, if we don't start climbing up. <laughs> all, the, all the kids are like, hey, I can't climb that, you know. And so <laughs> yeah. they're thinking of different ways. It's just, you know, Amaranth's obviously there. It's like, how did this wimp beat me? You know, he's just looking at them. And it's just, he's constantly being salty to Zidane yeah. for, for beating him. And yet not being a ruthless thug, you know? And so mm -hmm. regardless, they're they're strategizing how to get up the trunk and Amaranth's just like, yo, man, I'm just going to carry them. And so he, yeah. he just picks up Vivi and Ico under each arm and just jumps right on up. I, I love that part too, because Zidane's just like, oh, gotta love his spirit. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he's got a point though, because up until this point, you know, they're, they're sitting there like brainstorming and stuff like that, just just taking all this time. Yeah. Amaranth's a doer. He's just like, all right, you know what? This is not that complicated. Just carry him up. And so that's what they do. And Zidane gives Daggy a little piggyback ride. The, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <tree laughs> yeah. You don't see like it. That. You just see that she's exclaiming after he's like, all right, come here. <laughs> yeah. And then he just grabs her. So yeah. they all, they all basically somehow, I mean, don't ask me how to climb that. Yeah. No idea. All the way up there. But, Anyways, they all get up to the top. They're, you know, they're up there on this route, and um, this is kind of the first time that they finally actually get to talk to Kuja, and we get a little bit more insight into what he's doing and what his scheme is here. Yeah, and it's again, there's there's quite a bit here, so we're just gonna focus kind of on two things, really, really only two things to focus on. But you know, Dagger's obviously asking him about her mom and and what yeah. he did to her and all that, and. You know, he's just like, well, you know, it was all hidden there underneath her. I just gave her a little push, you know, and yeah. he refers to how she's, you know, so power hungry. She's not content with just her continent because mm -hmm. she's starting to she's starting to kind of come here. We'll find in a second. And then also he turns to VV and is talking to him about the black mages. He makes another reference to the puppet, right? Yeah, he really, again, like in classic antagonist form, I guess you could say, is he's just pushing their buttons. He knows yeah. exactly how to do this. But it's so interesting because 
we've known up until this point that Queen Braun wasn't always like this. And shortly right. after Dagger's, well, I guess the king or her father, you know, that that's up to interpretation, but we'll, yeah, we'll talk yeah. about that in a little bit. Anyways, after he passed, that's when Kuja came into the picture and kind of corrupted her. And so she started becoming power hungry and greedy and all this kind of stuff. He supplied her with the black mages, etc. And yeah. yeah, like what you were just pointing at, um, Vivi's still having this struggle with life and death. And also, you know, just the fact that now, now that they've stopped the production of Mist, no more black mages or, as Kuja puts them, puppets. Yeah, in which he, he does give you the recipe. So if you're at home, take notes. You can find these, <laughs> you know, right. you can find these ingredients at your local grocery store. But he says yeah. you just need one part Drake of Souls, uh, yeah. two parts of Mist, and voila, you know, you heat it up, mix uh, it together, boom, you got yourself a nice black mage puppet. So yeah, it's really interesting. I got a couple brewing upstairs as we speak, and <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> he's just he's so dude, he's he's brutal, isn't he? He is yeah, just vicious, he is. It, it, and he's doing it in like the most sneering way of just like ha ha. You know, and again, yeah, really, really pushing their buttons. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so then uh, we get a really interesting cutscene where, I like what Mark was alluding to earlier, where Kucha says that Braun wasn't even con content with dominating one continent. She had to get another. And then you get a cutscene where you see that the fleet of ships, yep. Alexandrian ships and Braun and everything, they're showing up to the Aoife tree, which is really weird because it's like who are they there to fight just kuja or well yeah well so so they are there she wants to take out kuja because she views him as the only one standing in her way now but how did how did she they're on boats man and he's on a dragon like uh, those things must have a giant motor to just like plow through the ocean to catch up to him i don't know but yeah you know just convenient that he is there at the ifa tree and she knows where to go but yeah she shows yeah. up she talks about how Kuja's showing his girly face. <laughs> you know, uh, the, they're ordering all of the black mages to focus casting a single spell. And then it <laughs> and then that's kind of it. And it goes back to Kuja. They're talking some more, you know, obviously they want him to stop or, you know, do do whatever. Doesn't happen, and boom, you're kind of given into it's quote unquote a boss battle. It's not though, right? I mean we it's just yeah, it's just a forced battle. And this is where he kind of talks about, um, he's like, I don't need mist to make monsters. I can make them out of magic or something like that. Yeah. And then he creates these um, mist monsters called Mistodons. Which, and... yeah, which I alluded to last episode. I, I, yeah. Like we talked about, going back and forth between these places, you kind of forget. You kind of forget which, which moment, you know, certain things are. So we did talk about them last episode, the Mistodons, where... They are considered undead, and so all of that still applies to them if you want to take the easy route. But yeah. if, if you do just fight them normally, they're, they're not particularly difficult, but I mean, they do have quite a bit of health. It's around 2,000, and then, you know, they got special abilities, a special mist ability, right? Yeah, mist is a really annoying move. I didn't know it was actually shadow damage, but when I looked up, it's, it's shadow damage to the whole party. Not a whole heck of a lot. But the annoying yeah. thing about it is, is it has the ability to put some, uh, to put the sleep status on some of your party members. That can be pretty annoying. Yeah. Other than that, you just have your bog standard typical moves, Ira, and a physical attack. By the way, like every single monster in this game has Fyra, Blizzard, <laughs> Thunder. Know, you know, right? They all have like a second level black ma black magic spell. How do they know how to do that? I don't know, man. Yeah, Kuja. But yeah. but regardless, if you just want to end it quick, you can just cast life on them. Remember, Phoenix Downs, they they generally will bring it to about 1 HP. So you'll just need to follow up with yeah. the attack. I mean, you might as well just attack with, you know, Vivi or someone. And mm -hmm. that's that. It's over. It does continue, but we are going to go to our bold move first. <laughs> All right, man, I will start us out this time. I'm going to bring it into Final Fantasy X because there's a treasure trove of them. But it was a pretty bold move if Kamari, when they're in kind of like that pub at Luka, 
of trying to punch out oh. Biron and Yankee. First of all, <laughs> let's let's acknowledge Titus. Dude, do not encourage this, man. Look at these two Ronsos. They are just towering over Kamari. Yeah. It's like, dude, they will murder him. And he's like, you can take him. And Kamari punches him out. And I mean, you know, who who knows what happened if, you know, something didn't go down after that. Well, and I love that part too, because Kamari does like an uppercut and just straight <laughs> yeah. up floors Biron. It's just so funny <laughs> when he does that. Like, I mean, Kamari, you can see how much bigger the other Ronsos are. But oh, yeah. Kamari's strong, man. Well, so. dude, it's because they trained him at first Hornmolt. <laughs> you know? But where was that power at Mount Gagazette? Let's be real. Like, they dude, where was... too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where was our uppercut move at Mount Gagazette to just take him out? Seriously. But what you got, man? Okay, so for this week, taking it to Final Fantasy VII, and, you know, it was a bold move when Rev-13, or Nanaki, uh, so he originally thought that his father was a scoundrel and abandoned <laughs> the go. canyon and all this kind of stuff, when, in reality, he actually went to uh, the Cave of the Gi and, you know, was protecting the canyon for that entire time, Unbeknownst to Red. Said yeah. all those things, man. Can't take it back. No, you can't. And that's why his dad started crying, even though he's petrified for who knows how long, you know. He's just yeah. welling up those tears. So in other words, he is sitting there. He's still alive, apparently. He's just stuck. Yeah. Man, what a yeah. what a terrible thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. But alright, well that is our bold moves, and let's continue on to see what happens between the Queen and Kuja. A lot more dialogue in, in, you know, follows as we talked about. It's a, it's a lot of dialogue here. But kind of an interesting exchange. Dagger wants to go help her mom. And Zidane is just like, the whole time, like, why? You know, she she wants yeah, her dead. Exactly. She extracted the Dolans from you. Like, why? But Dagger's just, you know, she goes like, that's it's that's still my mom. You know, that's still my only mom. And it, it does kind of make you think, you know, at this point, we still kind of hate the queen. I mean, she's been a jerk to us this whole game. Yeah. But you do have to think about it, you know, in the ways of Dagger that, yeah, you know, we don't know the queen wasn't always like this. And we know that she was a loving mother, apparently. And, you know, obviously so in Dagger's <laughs> eyes, it's still like, you know, she could still come back from this, so to speak. Yeah, and exactly. It's kind of hard for the player when you're going through this to have any sympathy whatsoever because... The only queen that we've seen in this game is the evil one, yeah. pretty much. So it's kind of hard for us to relate and everything. Yeah, there's there's some interesting dialogue here, too, where I think Amaranth and Zidane, they're both sitting back and it's like, well, why don't we just let them duke it out and see who's the winner? <laughs> like, yeah. This is a win-win <laughs> yeah. for us, right? But yeah, Dagger wants to try and do something. So she runs off. She just books it, abandons... <laughs> leaves the party so if you did have dagger in your party you won't anymore but she runs off yeah off to the left like down this big old route and we are left with another lovely encounter with a mystodon i think this time it's only one though think, so it's pretty easy yeah i think it's just one and then and then you're given control and so before you move down you'll probably see a, li a little hidden pink shape up top basically at the top of the screen and it is yeah. mochi the moogle He's hidden there. Yep. Nothing new with Mognet, except for if you do go to him back out, he received a letter from Stiltskin. Just, uh, it's very short, forget. It's, it says, like, yeah. no more mist. Is this a blessing or a curse? Oh, yeah, I think that's is what right. he says. And that's pretty much it, yeah. That, yeah, that's it. So, I mean, you can save if you want. Other than that, you do just have to go ahead and head down the route, which, <laughs> oh, man, dude, seriously. World record for the longest route in the world. Dude, this thing, it oh, just man. keeps going on and on and on. And min meanwhile, is... Missadons will give chase. Yeah, this is such a weird part because do you notice, like, you kind of get, like, momentum as you're running down it or something like that. Your, your running speed isn't the same as when you first start. Then as you keep going, like, he, he actually runs, seems to run faster. I don't know. Yeah, well, Maybe that's just well because to your point, yeah, the background kind of, it moves, right? As, yeah, as you go something. down, the background moves and it starts to, it does seem like it kind of speeds up a little bit. But anyway, so the amount of battles with Mystodons here, and this is an interesting part of the game in that they're not really completely random encounters, like how we have been uh, 
you know, up until this point, you can actually yeah. see the Mistodons on screen, but what'll happen is they'll just kind of appear and then catch up to you and you get into an, a random encounter. But you typically encounter maybe like one or two and they're exactly the same. So you fight those guys. Now, and, real quick, is that is it? Do you know is it is it an infinite amount? If you just sit there, like say you don't actually run and you just stand don't. there, do you think they'll keep? Yeah, coming? I don't because they seem to appear at certain points. Like if you just oh, stand okay. still, I don't think they're going to keep appearing. Gotcha. I think it's kind of a set number, but it also sort of depends on how fast you're running. <laughs> or or maybe just question, like the, yeah, the the certain like thresholds. You make it this far, and one appears, trigger, yeah. so to speak, and so. Yeah, but it seems like if you're running the whole way, you'll get into two encounters yeah. or something. So yeah, you make it to the bottom, and there's this cool-looking statue. Dagger's already there. B basically, just asks to help her, and you get the Aquamarine, which does teach you Leviathan, but yeah. it's, it's not what she's uh, expecting, is it? No, no. And first of all, this is <laughs> an interesting point to to note here is. It's going to be a while before you can teach Leviathan, but we'll get to that <laughs> later. <It's, laughs> yeah. it, it, a lot of things are going to happen, and it's going to be a while before she can learn some more Eidolons. But anyways, yeah, of course, Leviathan, if you guys have played Final Fantasies before, you know that Leviathan is the sea god, and that's not really going to help us here against Kuja, right? Because <laughs> yeah. Queen Braun, she brought her, her uh, navy fleet, they're all in the water. It's like, well, she can beat Queen Braun, but Kuja's in the air, so she's just like, I can't save Mother with this Eidolon and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, well, because um, I think I think Iko says like, you know, yeah, it talks about how it's a, the giant sea sea serpent sea and all that, and it's serpent, uh, yeah. its move is to do like a giant tidal wave or something. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah, that that wouldn't work. Uh, <laughs> be counterproductive right. there. But following this is when you get some sweet cinematics, right? I mean, just absolute yeah. crazy. So it kind of, it jumps to Braun real quick, just, uh, or really the soldiers talking about it, and then it goes to Braun, and you kind of get a glimpse of what all those black mages were channeling all their spells into one single spell. And actually, something I, I thought was pretty cool too, man, I don't know if you noticed, but the the main kind of, it looks like maybe the Black Mage leader or whatever. Dude, he's in a trance on Queen Bronze. I don't know if you've seen that, but he's <laughs> he's in a trance on it. And I was like, oh, I never noticed that. That's kind of cool. He's, he's ready to go, yeah. man. <laughs> Uh, the whole thing is kind of funny, though, because in the cutscenes, you can see, like, there's the main dude with the staff, and he's just yeah. standing up in the front. And then you've got, like, the type A's and the type B's, and they're just sitting there doing, like, their their casting animation over, <laughs> yeah, and, over, over and over and over again. So it, It's I, and, and no, I put too bad. It's pretty fun, because they do talk about how they're out of ammo, that last uh, wave of the Mistodons, you know. If, if one more wave comes, they'll take them out. Dude, they're in the sea! Like, what... These things, I, I mean, that... are they, like, super incredibly fast swimmers? Well, that's another thing I don't really get, and it's funny, kind of funny, you know, to hypothesize about is, yeah, are they fighting the Sidons? Because later, too, you can see that there's, like, some fire on the boats, and they're yeah. getting, like, beat up as if, like, they're actually under, you know, fire from cannons or something, but... All Kuja's done is just created Mistodon. So are they like on the boats fighting them? It's or, the Fyra, man. Know? That's why he gave them Fyra, you know? Exactly. <laughs> but so, we we do find that, yes, his his little trance, the Black Mage's trance and all that stuff is they're ca calling in Bahamut, right? And, yeah. and at first, you know, Dagger and all of them, they're getting super excited because they know who that is and they know that he could just completely annihilate Kuja and and he does he does attack him i mean it's, it's one of the coolest things you know he's bahamut's floating up and it shows the silver dragon akuja and you know it's just the the cool cutscene. he he did get a little boo-boo right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was kind of funny because of course kuja he says something like bahamut's powers incredibly even hurt me a little a little yeah he's got this kinda, little kinda little tiny blood spot on his forehead yeah, he starts bleeding just a little tiny bit, but then basically he's he's pretty much like game over, and uh, yeah. we get a scene of this. Um, he calls forth the eye in the sky that we kind of for 
we conveniently forgot to we, mention we did, last yes. episode. <laughs> you know, this is a pretty key thing that during that cut scene, this is going back a little bit, but with Dagger, we saw that there was the eye in the sky when they're in the, the choppy waters and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So we don't know what this is yet, but we're getting some glimpses of some future events in the story. And anyways, Kucha seems to be able to call this thing forth. Has some pretty crazy effects on Bahamut, right? Yeah. You know, and, and on that note of, of knowing that he is able to control this eye in the sky. Again, as Alex said, we, we kind of forgot to talk about last episode with the destruction of Madden Sar. You know, we talked about the tornadoes. But it gives you, a, it kind of fills in that gap now of like, what is that? Well, it's what Kuja can command. And so was he the one that did destroy all the summoners and stuff? And so you yeah. kind of start to think about that. But yeah, it does some like weird like waves or something on on everything and for whatever reason no one else is affected but bahamut changes sides essentially i guess it kind of like you know uh ensnares him under kuja's control and then i mean at that point i mean it's game over you know he just goes to town blows up all the ships you know and, and it shows bronze ships specifically he's at like point blank blowing it up and (laughs) It's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, it's it's yeah. a crazy cinematic. Kuja wins, obviously, then. And then it goes to, you know, we kind of fade to a beach. We find out they talk about one of the escape pods, right? I don't know how the heck Braun made it to an escape pod in time, but she apparently I made know. it to one of those escape pods. Maybe a little too late because she is laying down on the beach. She's She's done for. She knows it. But... All of that, she says she's finally free from the greed, and she feels like how she felt last time she was with Dagger and her father, and just it, it kind of goes along with passing of the torch now to Dagger. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting, like what you said too. I mean, Bahamut was at like point blank range, <laughs> I know, dude. with you know. Bronn's ship, and there's a really funny part too where, like, Bronn, her terrified face, and everything, <laughs> yeah. she just realizes it's like, oh no, yeah, she's like, oh, gosh. Just going down. And then after all of this happens, Kuja just is pleased with himself and just casually flies away yeah, on his just silver dragon. He's like, well, my job up. here is done. Yeah. And yeah, like what you said, uh, then they end up. They find Ron's escape pod on the beach, but again, it's just like, oh, we saw the cutscene. How'd she have time to get there? I do have, I have a hypothesis, man. Yeah. Kina found Braun. You know, she was probably fishing in the ocean. And we all know Kina is a master, <laughs> master of escaping. You know, she escaped yeah. the uh, Clara tree. So she's like, Braun, yeah. yo, this is how you do it, man. Here we go. And, uh, yeah. that is, that is a good point because, like, Kina. And poor Kina's just been left she out goes, of the story. Really I save you now. Kina. Come quick. Yeah, I, I save you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We will find out what happens now with Alexandria and who's in command. But before we do that, let's get to seed trivia. All right, Alex is on his rank 21 quiz. I'm not able to stop him, guys. I'm trying my hardest. I'm trying my hardest, but uh, we'll see. So, all right, let's let's kick it off. So our first question is in Final Fantasy VIII, and it is, Save the Queen needs Ochu tentacles, sharp spikes, and energy crystals to create. Oh, uh, Save the Queen is uh, what's this weapon, I think. I think that's true. All right. Final Fantasy 12. Hunt number 25 is the Death Scythe. <laughs> <laughs> These are just going to get so difficult <laughs> if, with the specifics. Um, true. All right. An interesting one for you here. Final Fantasy 7. So in reference to like materia combos, if you pair steel and comet material, it will steal on every hit. Or Comet 2, I guess, uh, would probably be a better one because it hits multiple is it, times. Uh, like Steel as well? Right, so every time that one of the, yeah. the Comets come down and hit, it steals. False. Final Fantasy X for Blitzball. At team level 25, you unlock the Flatline Formation. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a good one because I never really pay attention to that. 
false. Let's say false. Final Fantasy IX. You were just kind of talking about Amaranth's weapons. So Amaranth's Rune Claws has the Aura ability. Uh, false. In Final Fantasy XIII, Hope's dad's name is Bartholomew. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, man. All right, man, our last one, and I might have gotten you this, or gotten mm-hmm. you on this question for Final Fantasy X-2. The Blitzball player Yu Yi has the highest catch rating at max level. Yeah, you totally got me on that. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Yu Yi. Yu Yi. I've never even heard of that. Uh, true. True. <laughs> Let's recap. All right, Final Fantasy VIII, the question was, save the queen needs Ochu tentacles, sharp spikes, and energy crystal. You said true, it's false. It's not the Ochu tentacles, it's marble roll tentacles. So, got that. All right, Final Fantasy XII, you said true to the hunt number 25 being Death Scythe. And that is true. That's the, that's the correct one. Nice. All right, man, the materia question for Final Fantasy VII. So, you said false. I looked this up. Apparently, it's true. So if you have Steel comboed with Comet 2, and I'd imagine it's probably any other magics and stuff, but just, you know, if you do a Comet 2, every time it hits, it will Steel. Now... That seems weird. Don't hold it, you, don't, you know, don't count me too. I'm, this is stuff to hearsay that I looked up and researched, but I was I was looking into these a lot, and apparently mm. that's, a, that's the case, so we'll need some of you all listening to test that out. We're going to have to give it a go too at some point. Yeah, I'll have to try that. All right, our next question was Final Fantasy X for the team level 25 flatline formation. You said false. It is true. That's the formation you get. Okay. Flatline. You missed three, man. You can't miss one more. Uh, Let's see. Here we go. All right. Amaranth's Rune Claws ability has the aura, or Rune Claws has the aura ability. You said false. It is false. It does not have it. (laughs) It's It's the one before that I forget, but... Hope's dad's name is Bartholomew, so you got that right. Yeah. You said true. <laughs> it's testing you how long you, how well you knew his uh, his family, man. Bartholomew. Okay. And then the last question for Yu Yi in Final Fantasy X two. I I you know I dug into the Blitzball because I knew that you haven't done it because I haven't done it because Absolutely it's terrible. Not. And yeah. and yeah, you I mean there's tons of new characters. The stats are are different. Yu Yi has the highest catch rating. You said true. It is true, man. Uh, <laughs> 99. Here's here's the interesting thing, dude. And I don't know these. But there's, you know, as we know, there's a lot of different stat categories now in 10-2 Blitzball. Yu Yi has max in every single one. So, really? I don't know who this character is and how you get it because it's a free agent. But, yeah, dude. At max level, 99, 99, 99. 99 you know, it's just, it's across the board. It's insane. But you pulled it out of the hat, dude. You, you, you passed. You <laughs> passed. Somehow. <laughs> Somehow. So, oh, so right on, man. One, you yeah. obtained rank 21. Nice. All right. Well, let's get back to Final Fantasy IX to see what is next. All right, man. So here we are. We are at disc three. We are, you know, in accordance to the discs, halfway through, man. This is awesome. But we are back at Alexandria. It kind of starts with, you see Doc Tot, and then you see Dagger, and then you see Steiner and Beatrice, and you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what did happen to them? <laughs> oh, no, this is so... It really is weird the way the story went since we left Alexandria. Yeah. You know, it's been such a long time since you've seen Steiner and Beatrix and, and all of them. And you just yeah. kind of realize it's like, oh, yeah, they've been here that whole time. Like, what the heck? So. Exactly. And a little bit will fill in on that as we go through yeah. and what kind of did happen. But it, it seriously is, and that's how it was for me even, you know? At times when you're on the the um, outer continent, you're kind of like, oh, you know, what? what's going on with those guys? But yeah, no, yeah, you kind of just forget. For yeah, Exactly. There's, you know, the uh, memorial for Queen Braun. Dagger's sitting there. She's there mourning and everything and putting a wreath of roses around the memorial. 
Doc taught, talks about how, you know, even the Wreath of Roses was apparently kind of like from the people, so to speak. And he just says, mm-hmm. you know, even even with all the stuff she did recently, she's still beloved. So that kind of yeah. does give you an idea of the queen. As, as Alex kind of even said just a little bit ago about we only knew her as the evil queen. But apparently, exactly. I mean, even, even her own people still really love her. So apparently she was a really good queen. Unfortunately, yeah. we didn't know that part. Only knew that her hunting us down is all we know. Exactly. You do. It does fill in. We do know that, in fact, Princess Garnet's coronation is under under preparations. She will be the next queen, and yeah. Yeah. then it goes to Zidane in a pub, and he's sulking, oh, and it's man. like that's a Zidane. that's a true man right there. He's drowning <laughs> his sorrows down with his broken heart. Yeah, and this is all because you know. I after what happened recent events yeah um Queen Braun dying now Dagger is going to be the queen I think he's starting to realize this ain't gonna work out man this is just not no. gonna work yeah. <laughs> so poor Zidane he's sitting I'm... in the pub and just uh having a real hard time <laughs> he is well we got Ruby's there the the rootin' tootin' cowgirl and you know yeah. Marcus is there Blank's there and you know they're kind of talking but they decide to go ahead and leave him, leave him to his sorrows. They want to go see mm-hmm. Ruby's new theater because apparently this is the kind of first time everyone's back together. It's, it's kind of what it seems like. Yeah. Even, even though we know that Blink and Marcus have been at Alexandria since we escaped there, apparently they haven't met up with Ruby. But regardless, <laughs> they're going to go see her, her play or whatever's going on. They leave Zidane to it. And as they come out, you get Vivi and Vivi's there. And, mm-hmm. you know, they have a quick conversation. And this is kind of where you get just a little bit filler of where they're talking about how Marcus and Blank had to carry out Freya and Steiner and Beatrice, <laughs> you know, because they got worked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so we know that, you know, hey, they saved the day, which is kind of cool. And we get we get that little bit. But now you're given control of Vivi. They want you to come to the play and watch it. But you don't mm-hmm. have to yet, and please don't. So yeah. we got a lot of things here. We are not going to be able to cover everything in Alexandria in this episode. So we're going to do it about kind no. of halfway. There's a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of stuff that this is your only shot at doing because something mm-hmm. big's about to happen that you just simply won't be able to come back and, and do it. And so yeah. first and things first, there are some ATEs. So... When you are given control of VV, head to the right. Because once you go to that screen, uh, an ATE is going to unlock. I don't think any of these are, like, particular. I don't know. I was trying to look at some guide I'm stuff. Sure. They, they didn't really spell it out specifically. Like, you yeah, have to go so here. You point. have to do that. It's just, obviously, you want to make sure you are watching these. You don't miss any. Mm-hmm. And if you do go to the right, the first one you see is, it's so big, ATE. And yeah. it's with Ico. It, she's you got to think I go too, man. Like it's she's this little girl, dude. She's only been in ruins, and now you stick her into a giant castle city like Alexandria. Mm-hmm. Like and so she's looking at the castle itself, and she's like, "That's a big house." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big old house. I mean, especially where she came from, like you said. And then there's this really funny part. Oh, here gosh. where there's like the chef meister yep. characters running in and if you guys remember we kind of talked about this way 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 back at the very beginning with kina um they're like the little blue dudes with the chef hats but they cover yep. like most of their face all you can see these little eyes and they're like running into the castle and uh they have there's this really funny conversation with with aika where it's like are you hungry and then she's like she like she does little the little thing. she yeah she rubs her toe like the little shy like rubs her toe on the ground she's like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah she does a nod like yeah but I love how much thought she has to put into am I hungry hmm. Hmm. sort of this like bashful thinking yeah and then so she's she nods her head so very hungry same thing same thing it nods head yep uh, unbearably hungry same thing. <laughs> rubs toe yep yeah. and then they're just like. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad, and they just run away. It's like, what a jerk, I love man. that scene. This is a I little, know, and then she a does... little six-year-old girl. Yeah, and the, the way they do again, like the characters' animations are so funny because then she does like her, her like angry pose. Her, thing, yeah. Like, oh. Her throw down. Like you want to go, yeah. guys? It's like it's... You, Chef might you might be might be 
you know, you might want to be careful. Like, she is your size here. <laughs> She'll summon. She'll summon. Yeah. Oh, but but just some really funny scenes. Oh, dude, that was hysterical. And I didn't remember that one, you know. And so I watched yeah. it yesterday. I was like, oh, we got to talk one. about that. Hysterical. Absolutely. And so, same screen that you're at that you watched that AT. So if you went to the right, you're kind of in that... That really, I think it's the first screen you started with in Vivi way back, right? I think the very yeah, first time. Yeah. So like if you stayed there, go go south a little bit, go down, and you got kind of the hippo characters. Now, yeah. I literally have never done this. I never even knew about it until we started this whole thing, man. And you taught you told me about it. I didn't I didn't know this was even a thing. But it's hippo this. racing, right? Yeah, I hate this so much, man. <laughs> I, we were kind of texting about it yesterday yeah. and how you were doing on it, but I've done this, I think, one time. I'm never okay. going to do it again. So, basically, uh, to fill you guys in, this is a little mini game. Yep. And this is, it's really interesting that your window of time to actually complete this is really small. I mean, this is. is the only time that you can actually do this little side quest. And basically what's going on is Hippol is like uh, one of the little hippo kids. And, that we stole cards from. You know, yeah, we stole the cards from, yeah. And his mom's <laughs> really upset that he plays too many card games, so he's getting too chunky. And this mini game is all about us trying to get him in shape by racing him. Yes. And it's just really annoying because it's basically like, depending on your button mapping, like if you're playing on the old school PlayStation or if you're playing on Steam or whatever, you just have to have to alternate two buttons, yeah. like X or circle or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, over and over and over again to make VV run to win the race. Yes. And, so, and obviously the faster you press it, you know, the faster he goes. And, and that's why I hate it because it's just cra It's like button mashing dude. like crazy. Yeah, so... You know, I, di I did this and I saw it all the way through and yeah, I might need a new controller because nice. the buttons are broken, you know, but no, <laughs> but that's what, that's what it is in, in to really hit this, this point home that Alex has mentioned, like this is your only time in Alexandria, but not only that, you have to complete it before even going to Ruby's play. So like this mini game would be great if you could just come back every once in a while and yeah. do a little bit, but yeah. you can't, you have to do all of it right now. If you, if you know, to yeah. complete it and yeah, so you're, you're having to race him. You have to, you have to win in order for him to level up. Right. So that's what it is. You get different rewards for Hippal leveling up. The only way he levels up is if you beat him. And mm -hmm. at first it's fine. I mean, just to put in perspective, he gets all the way up to level 80. That's, that's his max. At first, every time you win, it's just it goes up by five. So it actually goes pretty quick, and and he's really slow. So it's really easy to win. You don't even have to be fast with your button yeah. mashing. And just to kind of give you some of the rewards here, level 10, you'll get a word card. Level 20, you get a carry-on worm. 30 is a Tantarian card. 40 is an Armstrong card. 50 yeah, is a cards. ribbon card. And now this is where it starts to suck. Because once you hit level 50, each win only increases it, his levels by two. And that's only to level 56. And then after that... I believe... I think those increments are based on the distance in which you win, I think. Um, well, that would make more sense, right too. Or? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it would I because so. he does start to catch up. And it's, like, impossible yeah, and that's to really why get it's usually it. by one. So, so that might be relative then. So you might want, but but for me, and in, in at least the speed I was going, I never lost a race. So we'll we'll say that. But around fifty six is when it only starts to go up by one, and you still got to get to eighty. And it's like, yeah. it's like, come on, and this is taking forever here. A couple of things I would note. I think one of the most critical parts, and I didn't do this on my game, but I would recommend it on yours if you guys are doing this. Right before level 60, make a save, because that Nova Dragon card is probably the best one oh, here. Oh, gosh, yes. And if you get a good one of those, I mean, it, okay, so it's a, like, you know, Ribbon is a defensive card, Genji is a defensive card, Armstrong's not that great, but Nova Dragon can have, like, crazy attack. I mean, we're yes. talking, like, A attack, or... Yeah, I was, um, was going to say, B mine, attack. I got 8 attack, and then both defenses were 8 and 9. So, I mean, it was... It's strong. So, I would at least 
recommend getting to at least level 60 get that nova dragon card genji card i mean i got it it's it's like like you said it's defensive my ribbon that same sucks. thing yeah. zero attack and it's just defenses and it's like okay well you're still yeah, never going to win a battle then if you have no attack you know and so exactly so regardless though the whole point of this is if you do get to level 80 you just get the in-game key item athletic queen and then you'll get the track star achievement if you're on like playstation or xbox or something like that and so that's kind of the purpose but really if you're just wanting the cards nova dragon as alex that that's kind of the only one that's even worth any of this yeah and so did you go all the way and get the i did i did get it nice. i mean you know like i said that's the first time i ever did it i'm like you i will probably never do that again maybe just get the nova dragon call it call it quits and because it's just it's just so boring, dude. You have to do it so many times. And like I said, I didn't really ever have trouble winning. But still, after doing that, it took about 15, 20 minutes. And all I was doing the whole time was hitting two buttons as fast as possible. So it's like, oh, I was like, just please end this. It's just really funny. So you get this key item. Paul is like in crazy good shape now or something like that. And there's something really funny. So when you go to the key item and you know how like you can press select and you get like the mog gives you a little right. bit of information on it it says something really funny like uh hip paul's like i only do what makes my mom happy <laughs> <laughs> well, i can't it... remember exactly we'll have to put that on next one but it is really funny yeah that is pretty hysterical it it, it to just end it with this i hope he is in good shape we literally just ran 40 sprints so Oh, back seriously. to back, right? And back to back, yeah. So it's got to be in really good shape at this point. Yeah. Well, after that, you can kind of just uh, move move forward, right? So if you just kind of go to the square, the main square area, that's where like the, the ticket master is jump rope and all that. You'll get two ATEs. It doesn't matter which one you you watch in which order. The first one that you can watch is Artemisian, right? And <laughs> the first thing you might be looking at is like. Dude, why is there a striped purple Moogle? <laughs> like, what is going on? Yeah, seriously. I mean, we don't really know too much about it. We know that Mognet's no. been out for some random reason. And this guy, Artemision, I guess is like the original original dude that's that's uh, delivering the letters for Mognet yeah. and all this kind of stuff. But for some reason, Mognet Central is down and they're not able to distribute any of the mail or anything so which, which is why we are about. having to do it yeah right right and so, so again that, that's kind of just a leading up we will get much more info into this later but that's kind of our first look at like why is this dude purple and even stiltskin is like your, your coat's so shiny koopo <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, yeah we get a little bit a little bit of insight into that yeah and then the second one we got that you can just watch right after that is to fly high and it just kind of goes to blank and Marcus. They're outside of Ruby's theater and they're just kind of talk about Zidane, you know, about this time, you know, it's real. He fell for the, for a queen of all people, you know, and all this stuff. And we'll just let him be kind of a deal. Just tiny little dialogue right there. We will have more, more about that soon. And we will actually have more soon. So there are more ATs. There are more side things to do here. That's why we couldn't fit it. But we're going to have to end it here because otherwise we will be going on like an hour and a half episode. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, we thank you all for listening and hanging out with us. We're so excited that you're here and we hope that you continue to listen to the episodes. We try to get one out once a week. Please check us out on Instagram. It's Final Stop for Final Fantasy Talks. That's our handle. Also stop by Final Fantasy to or Final Stop for Final Fantasy Talks.com. <laughs> That's where the... The blog post is, you know, and all, all the extra info there. And yeah, just be looking out for that next episode. Thank you all. I'm Mark. I'm Alex. And this is Final Stop for Final Fantasy Talks.